you know, this transition to electric vehicles is something amazing. I really like this effort with skateboards because I think that's a revolution in this transition. But the cherry on top of the skateboard is in-wheel motors. I think that really revolutionizes what you can do with an electric vehicle. And today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about, in-wheel motors. Because I've got two experts from NIAPCO, Don Rambowski, who's the Director of Advanced Systems, and Jürgen Lehrman, who's the Director of Strategic Development. And for those of you do who don't know, NIAPCO is a supplier that's been around like forever. It stands for New England Auto Parts Company. And I'll bet you never knew that before, but that doesn't matter because now we're going to learn about wheel motors. And, and Jürgen, what is it that led you to even start thinking about that NIAPCO should make these? Well, NIAPCO is, is known for 100 years, more than 100 years for delivering very successfully and reliable drive, uh, mechanical drive uh, uh, parts components. Um, so uh, we started to have a strategy, strategy session about seven years ago in thinking what could be the revolution in the auto industry. And then in-wheel motors came out as the uh, most important um, and disruptive technology. And that combined with a, a unique um, invention um, that Don and the team were able to pull off. Well, that was the trigger to say, now, now we can really get this going. Okay, what was that trigger? What was the invention, Don? Well, um, when you have to put the whole powertrain in a pretty compact space, you can't waste any space at all. And we looked at the area inside the motor's rotor as a potential for some space to put some gears in there, collapse everything. But it meant we had to put together a large bearing between the rotor and the stator so that we could hollow out the rotor. And it turns out we've invented a, a form of a plane bearing that does just that. The rotor is directly supported on the stator, which hollows out a lot of space for us to squeeze everything together and get all the gears we need and clutches and so on in a very compact piece. I, I think that's key. This is not just a motor, right? This is an entire powertrain. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. So you've got the transmission packaged in with this motor as well. Exactly right. Exactly right. So it's a full powertrain. It's a two-stage transmission. We picked an application as a showcase, if you want to, as a light commercial vehicle in a given rim, rim size. So a 16-inch rim, which is almost the hardest thing to do, uh, build a real transmission, a real power unit that can bring up to 3,000 newton meter in torque uh, in one wheel. That's a uh, lot of torque. It, it is a lot of torque, but this is what you need. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what we have demonstrated in our concept car, in our demonstrator. Uh, we have driven it, we have presented it to OEMs, and you can guess the feedback is very, very uh, good. <laughs> so people do are, or are interested in, in seeing that. I, I think what you said is key there, uh, that you're doing this on a commercial vehicle. Because one of the concerns about wheel motors is that they add a lot of unsprung weight to the wheel that could adversely affect the handling of the vehicle. But if it's a commercial vehicle, that probably doesn't matter much. Yeah, and there's a, let's unpack that just a little bit. It's an interesting question because it always comes up. And what you really care about is the ratio of sprung to unsprung mass. So in a heavier commercial vehicle, a little more mass in the wheel, not such a big deal. But our package, because it's so small, is actually relatively light also. And by virtue of its power and torque density and low mass is really suitable for a pretty wide range of vehicles. And the trick is reduce the mass. And what's that ratio of sprung mass to unsprung mass is really the thing that makes for the controllability. So what's it weigh? Um, we're adding just, it's about 35 kilograms over a driven wheel end in this particular implementation. So relatively light for a lot of power and torque. Mm -hmm. And uh... Jürgen, you mentioned uh, how much torque uh, that is available on this. So uh, you're envisioning four motors at four wheels or just two at, at two wheels? What, what's your plan? Well, the, the beauty of our system is that it's in a very wide range scalable. So it could be um, primary drive just on the rears. It could be a four by four um, with, uh, it could be even a, an additional, an add-on uh, four by four. Um, so, but 
what the the uh, car we have is a single rear wheel drive and it is good uh, to all the uh, for all the performance that it takes so mm -hmm. hill climb towing um, ev everything works with just the two motors on the rear why do you need the gears? I would think with uh, so much torque available, maybe you would not need a, a gears or gear reduction. Well, the torque is available because we have the gears. Oh, wow. um, so the, the, motor, the motor itself in that given space would not be able to supply this torque. So we need the reduction of the transmission to provide the, the gears. Mm -hmm. um, you could ask whether we need a two-stage transmission. Uh, and here is the trick to say, um, we want to have the motor operating in the efficient, most efficient field for all the time. So the overall system efficiency uh, we see improved by the by the uh, um, by the stage, the two-stage transmission. Mm -hmm. And what activates uh, the transmission, the the gears to move? Well, there's a software algorithm that number one looks at. Uh, what is the most efficient operating point for the given speed and torque demand? And then buffers that a little bit by the driver behavior, saying if the driver really needs to accelerate more rapidly, it would kick down or use a lower gear for a little more torque. But when the torque demand is modest, it's always looking for the most efficient motor operating speed. Mm -hmm. So efficiency first, and then moderated by when the driver has a, a high torque demand or a very low torque demand to make sure we're doing the right thing for the driver's input. Are these uh, electrically operated? The clutch mechanism for shifting gears is electrohydraulically operated. So there's a, a solenoid controlling a hydraulic pressure to a shift element that moves the little dog clutches back and forth. So a, a hydraulic pump somewhere on the vehicle is part of the package too? Yeah, let me say a word about that. We have a hydraulic system that serves for motor cooling, for the supply of lubricant to the gears, and for the shifting. So we, uh, we're pretty stingy about using our uh, equipment and hydraulic supply to make sure we get the most out of it. So mm -hmm. it's a triple use type of system. Um, you're working with, oh, sorry, you were gonna say something no, and, here? And even, even the inverter cooling, we oh, do yeah. full, full, uh, in oil um, immersion, which also brings another uh, span of advantages like EMV uh, advantages. So EMC. EMC, okay, sorry, yeah. my German comes sometimes kicks yeah. in. Yeah. So you're, you're you're containing the electromagnetic interference. Exactly. Yes. So yes. we can have AM radio in these commercial vehicles, right? <laughs> well, easily. <laughs> that is, yeah. it, it's, it's funny you say it that way, but it is one of the goals is try to hit the EMC targets that would allow AM radio to carry. Sure. On. No, that, that that's a very clever uh, uh, approach that you've got there. Um, you you work with Elafe, the the company from um, uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia. Slovenia, thank you. Uh, Why did you work with Elafe to develop this? Well, I I can comment on that, please. I mean, one reason is they seem to be out there. They they were one of the first to really start pushing these motors, yes. right? Wheel motors. And we uh, looked at a number of partners for the motor technology and uh, started up a conversation just it was really just a cold call from our team uh, and the alafe guys were a little reluctant to talk to us at first and we explained more of what we were trying to do and they got more interested and uh, we found i'd say a common almost cultural approach they're very good to work with fantastic partners and uh, really, really good on the science and the experimentation that these sort of early things required. Uh, so fantastic partner, and it uh, has grown over the last uh, now just not quite six years we've been working with them. Mm -hmm. So where does it stand right now? I mean, is it production ready? There's still more development work to go. Where, where do you stand now in the development of it? We are ready with the proof of concept. Um, so we have this demo car running and still also used being used as a test bench um, so we have customer demonstrations uh, we we can uh, also optimize and and verify from our development uh, what what we have um, then with the vehicle which is a very important point um, there is still let's say now b sample c sample so ready for production design production implementation this is the next steps we have to go um, and we are looking for a, a customer to go that path with us because mm -hmm. 
as I said before, um, the, the pot potential applications are, are wide. Um, so we, we want to have a, a pass, clear pass forward together with a partner or, or multiple partners to mm -hmm. go. And when do you think, I mean, let's dream here a little bit. Let's say an OEM comes to you this year and says, okay, we want to move forward on it. What would it be? Three, four years to be in production? Longer? What do you think? I think, uh, well, rather, rather shorter. Um, so, um, well, depend depends on the, uh, let's say, it depends on the application, the complexity of the application. But uh, three years and, and maybe good, short, short three years um, should we should be able to be in production for Very that. interesting. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. What, what's it like to drive it? I mean, how, how does it feel? Um, we had a, a customer comment. Uh, senior executive uh, driving the demo vehicle and he said that's the best one of these I've driven um, and at one point we uh, had to drive it up the grades and so on start on grade torque level and so on we're just really right there it's uh, our first demo is a, a light commercial vehicle three and a half ton uh, big box and it it goes really well. It's it's a little quicker than you might expect. Mm -hmm. So fun to drive. Mm -hmm. And in a commercial vehicle, I mean, if you move the hub motors or, or, or put the powertrain in the hubs, the, the wheels, you can get rid of uh, the center differential, the prop shafts. Now you can open up a lot of space in a cargo van or a cargo vehicle, right? I mean, this yeah. has got to be something that really appeals to the commercial sector it's it's looking that way absolutely so as you said in the introduction the the this is the cherry on top so the the skateboard now is is really possible um and and all the space improvements that you can have for cargo or for larger batteries if you want to have an increased range um, but the system would also go as a hybrid uh, plug-on application to to a central drive if if you still want to have the combination um, so that's why I say the variety of the applications is is just huge. That's a great point. It doesn't have to be a pure electric vehicle. It could be an extended range EV, Absolutely. a PHEV, or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. Yes, and and it it would be rather uh, easy in in because you do not need re to retool the, the 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 car. The OEM wouldn't need to retool. You can have this as an add-on with almost no conversion to the base vehicle. Yeah, 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 go into a bit more detail on that, Don. That, that's very interesting. Any automaker could take an existing vehicle and literally just bolt your system into it. That was one of our targets for this particular system was to fit between the leaf spring and the wheel hub and not change the geometry of the suspension or the chassis and in the demo vehicle that we've been, we didn't even move the shock absorber. So packing all this stuff in that little space was the key challenge we took it as you know here's the hard problem and if you can get this to work you got something that's probably a little more worthwhile and i i think our oem customers have seen that and very much appreciated that hey there's not a big tear up involved here very conventional brake very conventional hub structure and still all the torque and power you need in that little space mm -hmm. you, you said that this could go beyond uh just commercial vehicles too though has any automaker or anybody expressed interest in in going beyond commercial vehicles yeah um coming from some really interesting different quarters uh there's lots of vehicles let you know think about the mid-size suvs where a little more package space in the back for more seating or more cargo would make a lot of sense almost the same as the commercial vehicle and uh, we've recently had some inquiries in some rather higher performance vehicles uh that they're looking for remarkable amounts of power and torque and if they can pack it in the wheel ends that is an advantage because it leaves more room for battery and other things mm -hmm. so quite a scale yeah what am i missing here i've asked you guys a whole bunch of questions is there anything that you would like to add jurgen um no i think we touched the most important points i i think we have a real gem here and and uh um, so we we are very very um, enthusiastic on bringing this now to the road. Well, when you talk to garages and garages, when you have a chance, uh, the, the people at Alafe. At Alafe, yes. 
Um, ask them where the uh, code name came from. And you've seen it in some <laughs> of the press. It's called Super Bear. And uh, I believe it was Garaz Godovac that named it. And so that, that'd that be the the uh, trivia question. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll ask him when I do the interview with him. But, but, but that's what you guys call this in-wheel motoring. Super, Super Bear. Bear. Super Bear. Yeah. 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 That's and, a great name. It, I like it, that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, it was the project code name when we started out. And we said, why can we really use that as the publicly available name? And it, it turns out, yeah, <laughs> we, that's, that's what we call it. So that's great. Well, look, I, I commend you guys for, for doing this. Uh, like I said, I, I think that's the cherry on top of a skateboard EV design. As we talk, it can go beyond EVs and the like, but. I think this is going to affect, you know, the the structural layout of a vehicle more than anything I can yeah. think of off the top of my head. It, it really opens up what the designers can do with a vehicle. Yeah. 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 Some very nice possibilities. Absolutely. Yes. Well, really good. Thanks so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. Time. Thank you.